So good morning to everyone who's here. Uh, how are we all doing today? Are we acclimating to the cold weather? How about the snow? I don't know. I'm not really sure about it yet. <laughs> Daylight savings too. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I know. So does anybody have their Christmas tree up yet? Just me? I did it. I know. Oh my God. I, no. I won't apologize. It snowed. Yeah. So what anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you all for joining us today. So we're going to be diving into maximizing your industrial digital marketing budget with Ann Cotter. She is our sales and marketing director here at Top Floor, and I will let her introduce herself in just a minute. Um, just a couple of little quick notes before we begin. The webinar will be recorded today. It's already being recorded and you will get an email as a follow-up with the full presentation plus any of the resources that we might mention along the way. And so um, let's get this thing kicked off. As we work our way through, go ahead and feel free to ask questions, make comments, or if you have any of your own examples to share, go right ahead and do that in the chat box. And um, know that we will also have a dedicated time at the end for questions as well. So if we don't get to your question during the presentation, we will save it for the end. So I will let Anne take it away and uh, share her knowledge with all of you. Sounds good. Thank you, Martha. Um, I'll also add, I know some of you had submitted questions when you filled out the form to register. So I, I tried my best to weave in some answers throughout this presentation. So uh, look out for those. Um, and then, of course, if there's anything that we don't get to, I'll try to keep an eye on the chat box while I'm presenting, but I, it might be easier for me to just come back to that at the end, but we can address questions um, when we get to the end of the presentation. So yes, we're talking about maximizing your industrial digital marketing budget. There we go. Um, so quick introduction to me. Um, like Martha said, my name is Ann Cotter. Um, I've been at Top Floor for about five years now. Um, I started on the recurring marketing side, so working with our manufacturing and industrial company clients, um, helping them with their SEO, paid search, content marketing, et cetera. Um, and recently, uh, as of October, I've kind of transitioned over into the sales and marketing team here at Top Floor. So I'm kind of working in-house um, as our sales and marketing director and kind of bridging those two departments together. Um, so it's kind of cool because I, I can relate to our clients now in a new way of being that in-house marketing person um, at a B2B organization. So um, hopefully some of these tactics that I've been putting into place and that have helped me will help some of you as well. Um, so today, what we're going to be talking about is number one, if now is the right time to invest in digital marketing. Um, there's a lot just going on with the economy, um, supply chain issues. People are kind of looking at cutting back on some of their expenditures. So that's something I want to address right away, too, is kind of whether now is the right time to invest in digital marketing. Um, we'll talk a little bit about how to set the right goals. Um, so looking at your holistic kind of marketing funnel and identifying what opportunities there are and working kind of from bottom of the funnel to the top um, with addressing any low hanging fruit opportunities. Um, we'll talk about budget distribution throughout the funnel as well, just kind of where, where to invest at different points in the funnel from top, middle, bottom, and then identifying any existing opportunities that are budget friendly. All right, so first and foremost, why now? Um, B2B marketing and economic downturn or the R word recession. Um, so it's come up in conversation a lot of kind of whether now is the right time to really invest in marketing. And marketing is typically, I would say, one of the first budgets to get cut when we're kind of facing economic downturn or recession. Um, I, I think it tends to get viewed more as a cost versus what I see it as, as an investment. Um, so it's kind of um, inevitable that that's <clears throat> probably something that might get scaled back at your company. But I would just encourage you to be selective in that process, process of where you are cutting your marketing budget. Um, make sure that you're maintaining or even accelerating what you're doing that has proven to work well over time and maybe just scale back on some of the evergreen projects or things that um, maybe aren't as fruitful. 
I also think that um, this can be seen as a really good opportunity as well. Um, so a couple of reasons why. Uh, one, lower competition. So when you look especially kind of at outbound marketing and some of that top of funnel activities like paid advertising, um, yeah, paid ads specifically, display, paid search, um, you're probably going to see lower costs per clicks as people are probably going to be scaling back on some of their budget there. Um, so there's opportunity for you for just overall greater visibility um, and more bang for your buck with those lower cost per clicks. Uh, the other reason I think it's going to be really important, um, and this is actually something I remember kind of coming up um, in 2020 with all the pandemic chaos, um, but buyers are just going to be more selective overall. Um, so it's going to be kind of a more thoughtful decision, especially high dollar um, bigger decisions like that, your buyers are going to be not just checking your website, but really everywhere that you have a digital presence. So I, I think we've probably here at Top Floor talked about that in previous events many, many times about the importance of diversifying your channels. But I think that's going to be especially important in 2023 as buyers are going to be kind of checking for that thought leadership in more places. Um, the other reason that I think now is an important time to invest in your marketing um, is just recessions don't last forever. Um, eventually, your buyers are going to return and they are going to come back and you want to stay top of mind when that happens. So focus more again on that kind of relationship building side of things. Um, and hopefully that when they're at the point to make a buying decision, you're going to be the one that they come to. Um, and ultimately, you just you won't find growth without marketing, in my opinion. Um, you can maintain or even um, you know focus on your current client list and how you might upsell them um, at times like this. But if you really want to accelerate or growth grow, um, you're going to have to invest in some marketing as well. All right, so we're going to walk through the B2B funnel. Um, I'm sure you guys have all seen this a million times, but we're just going to take like a holistic view of this. Um, I want to talk a little bit about kind of what metrics to measure and pay attention to throughout this funnel so that you can keep people in the funnel for the longest period of time, because that's the whole goal is getting as many people in and keeping the relevant ones there. So at the top of the funnel, I'm sure you're all aware of this, but there's awareness or visibility. So the, the key ways to measure that are going to be through impressions. Um, so display ad impressions, for example, um, or your impressions in search results, um, opens if you're doing email, followers for organic social growth, basically measuring how people are initially hearing about you. How are they getting their eyes on your company and your brand? Um, so typical tactics that fall into this category are going to be your non-branded SEO, um, display ads, pay-per-click, blog, content promotion, any events that you're hosting virtual or, or live. Um, and typically this is the most expensive part of your marketing budget because, um, especially because of the, the advertising that might go into it. Um, so this is roughly going to be about 40% of your marketing budget that goes into awareness. Um, and then following that, we have interest. So how much of those eyes are actually becoming interested in or curious about you? So how many, how many of those eyes are turning into traffic to your website, clicks to your website, um, thinking outside beyond just digital marketing? That could also be how many people are showing up to your trade shows, to your booths, um, to any in-person events. So you can also think of it kind of beyond just digital, um, how, how much of that traffic is getting to those other touch points. And then of course, as we get closer to the bottom of the funnel, we have conversions. Um, so those could be kind of anything from a soft conversion, which might be someone downloading a piece of content, um, watching a video all the way through on your website, or it could be something a little bit more um, direct or more of a hard lead, which would be someone requesting a quote for a specific product or um, is really interested in kind of taking, taking that next step right away. So how much of that traffic then is taking some sort of uh, key action on your website? 
And then at the bottom of the funnel is your close. So then of course, how many of those leads are actually sales qualified opportunities? Um, and then ultimately the question is of those sales qualified opportunities, how much business do you end up with? How many of those closed um, from those conversions? And I think I forgot to mention too, as far as like budget distribution. Um, so I mentioned awareness, that's about 40% of your budget there. Um, interest, we would be about 30% of your budget and then conversion 15% and close 15%. So uh, we'll talk a little bit too about how to, again, start at the bottom with kind of the lower effort um, tactics that you can put in place right away and working your way up to the top with some of those higher investment items. Um, so next, I want to talk a little bit about how the funnel kind of ties into setting your goals and um, tying back to some of your sales and revenue goals. So I'm just going to do a quick like example. Um, so you can take this as maybe all the traffic, everything you're doing, pin pinpointing back to your website, or you could look at this as maybe a specific campaign you're running. Um, but this is just kind of to give you an example of the type of metrics that you're going to be looking at when you're setting your goals and kind of working your way backwards to how are you going to fill that goal. Um, so for example, say you're running a virtual event, something like this. Um, you're going to measure first and foremost the impressions. This is probably the hardest thing that you can really get a good metric on, but that's gonna be how many email opens did you get? How many eyes did you get on your advertising and your organic posting? Whatever sort of promotion you did for your event, how many eyes did you get on that? And then next you're gonna be again, kind of moving down the funnel into traffic. So how much of that traffic then actually turned, or sorry, how many, how much of that, those impressions actually turned into traffic? So measuring again, like your click-through rate there, um, how much of that traffic turned into conversions, how many of those conversions were actually sales qualified? Um, so you should have some sort of goal as far as how many sales qualified leads you want to get out of the marketing you're doing. And those should really be determined based on your revenue goals. So identify that with your CFO or who's ever in charge of finances, setting some of those revenue goals, um, and then figuring out from there, okay, how many leads do I need to meet that? And then once you kind of have some of those averages, as far as what your average click-through rate looks like, or your average conversion, conversion rate looks like, you can start to, again, kind of work backwards. So my goal here is if I wanted to see 15 sales qualified leads. Um, essentially, I'd have to triple everything. So starting from the top, I'd need to get in front of 15,000 eyes instead of 5,000. This is a very simplistic view, I will say, um, and is kind of starting from the top. But you also really want to pay attention to what you can do to optimize in that traffic and conversion part of the funnel. How can you increase those conversion rates and click-through rates? Because um, like I said, focusing at the top of the funnel is the most expensive. So there's many things you can do kind of in that middle part of the funnel to drive more traffic and um, more conversions. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, so like I said, um, the best place to start is at the bottom of the funnel. So you can see I've kind of flipped the normal marketing funnel, how we typically see it. Um, but the important part here is that your bottom of the funnel is going to be your low investment, high impact tactics. Um, so this is where I would really recommend that you actually, if you're a marketing person, leverage your sa sales team um, to the best of your ability. And if you're on the sales team, make sure you're communicating with marketing about what sort of needs you have when you're in those sales conversations and you're qualifying those leads that are coming in. Um, so a few questions that I can recommend to kind of getting your sales and marketing teams in alignment is one, just learning from lost opportunities. So why didn't that close? Um, was it competition? Was it price point? Or did we not have enough information on product XYZ that really demonstrated our abilities or what our capabilities are? Um, or did we not prove that, you know, we, we know a specific industry really well? Those are the kind of the questions that you would want to ask them um, in addition to kind of what are some of the most common questions they're getting in the, their sales journey or sales process. Um, so 
for example, we just had something that came up in a recent conversation with one of our prospects, which was basically what is the difference between WordPress and Drupal and how do I decide between those things? And it's something that has come up a lot in conversation when we're at that in that sales cycle. So that could be something that we create a piece of content around. So basically identifying what is that content that you might need to create to support your sales team. Um, of course, also always ask them what does the quality of leads look like that are coming in um, and just what tools would support your sales team, whether that's case studies for, for specific industries, um, product brochures, presentation decks, all of those kinds of things that could help support them. I don't know if you can see my like Zoom thing at the top of my screen, but I'm just going to move it so it's not in my way. <laughs> Let's see. We can't see it. Don't worry. Okay. I was like, I don't know why it just like popped up all of a sudden. I was like, that's going to bother me. <laughs> okay. The other thing I want to say at the bottom of the funnel here is um, looking at your existing house list. This is, I think, going to be really important again for 2023 when we're looking at kind of taking stock of who we already have in our CRM and our marketing lists versus you know focusing too much at the top of the funnel. I think people are going to really be leveraging their current customers, existing contacts or leads that um, have come through but maybe weren't ready to buy initially. I think that's going to be a really important place to start looking in 2023. Um, so just a few tips on kind of how to manage your CRM. So make sure that your CRM is tracking lead sources. <clears throat> um, and identifying too, as well as like any lost opportunities over time, because um, that can be something that'll be helpful if in a year you're looking at lost opportunities and kind of wanting to know maybe it was they just weren't ready to buy then. But maybe now that it's a year has gone by, it might be time to restart or re-engage um, a conversation with them. So make sure you're kind of keeping tabs on all of those things. Um, like I said, yeah, look at, looking at your lost opportunities from the past year and can any of them be followed up on based on kind of how we've qualified or identified them. Um, and then looking to, to make sure that list is up to date. So just kind of doing a cleanup and making sure if anyone switched companies, we have their most current contact information. That might also be um, a new opportunity to work with another company if they've moved somewhere else. Um, and start kind of segmenting those lists um, based on what services they're interested in or how they heard about you um, and prepare some outreach plans based on those segments. So definitely start with kind of what you already have. Um, these are gonna be people who already know you, they're familiar with you. Um, so how can you kind of work with your existing leads um, to kind of build revenue over the next year? Um, something else, and I kept going back and forth of whether I would highlight this in the bottom of the funnel or the middle of the funnel, but just an overall tip that I really recommend um, is assessing some of your top performing pages. So um, pages that are bringing in the most traffic. Um, if you go into your Google an Analytics report and just look at your landing page report, um, typically your homepage is going to be what drives the most traffic to your website. Um, but occasionally we'll sometimes see with clients and even um, over here at top floor that sometimes content like content that's been around for several years starts to just kind of creep up as, as far as organic search um, or organic rankings. And all of a sudden they're just bringing in the most traffic to our website. Um, so I'm talking about blogs, um, things that are kind of longer format content. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is just assess that that content is actually relevant to your business and your ideal customers. So if you can kind of, you know, use something like Google Search Console to take a look at how people are actually getting to that page, what are they actually searching for that's getting them there? So pinpoint kind of whether that traffic is relevant. That would be step one. Um, but step two, if that traffic is highly relevant and that blog is kind of speaking to the exact industry or target market that you really want to address, Make sure that you are leveraging that in some way. It's essentially like putting a billboard on a highway as one way I've heard it before. So make sure you're taking advantage of that traffic and moving them into whatever that um, kind of next step in the funnel would be, whether that's, as you can see from this example, it's a free marketing audit. Um, so maybe that's for you an ebook or some sort of product download, product brochure download. 
um, whatever that next step is, just make sure you're leveraging that traffic in some way. All right, uh, moving to the middle of the funnel. So this is where you're going to be assessing the traffic that you are getting and then user experience. Basically, before you're going to kind of throw money or um, a lot of investments into, again, like paid advertising or bringing in additional traffic, make sure that what you have in that middle of the funnel is actually working well. So take stock kind of of your overall perf website performance and figure out too, if you can, where you might be losing some of that traffic. So questions to kind of ask yourself here are what pages are bringing in the most traffic and figuring out um, why. So again, Google Search Console free tool, it's like one of your best friends and it's going to kind of help you understand the search traffic that you're getting and how people are getting to key pages on your website. Um, what are users searching for when they arrive to your website? So we'll talk a little bit about that in a second here, but um, kind of looking at your own site search on your website to figure out basically what, what content might be missing or is too buried or hard to find for the average user. Um, looking at pages where users might drop off. Um, and then what are they doing when they get to critical pages on your website, whether that's your homepage or product category pages or detail pages, et cetera. Um, so one that I mentioned that is, I think a tip that gets overlooked in my opinion is leveraging site search to understand maybe what, um, what information, like I said, is too buried or difficult to find, um, or maybe you just don't even have any content that really speaks to that specific question. Um, so I've included a link here and I, I think we'll be sending this presentation over maybe Martha <laughs> um, to let you guys um, have access to this link, but I just not noticed Martha disappeared, but I think she'll be sending this over to everyone. Um, but this will that'll show you how to set up site search with Google Analytics for and Tag Manager. Um, but essentially, this can be really helpful for just seeing, again, what people are searching for that might be difficult to find. So in the example here, I have um, data sense for this particular client was one that came up a lot. So that might be some information of, okay, what is data sense? Why are people searching for that? How can I kind of bring that forward on the website? Um, another tactic here too is investing in heat maps. And in fact, a lot of these um, can be free at their kind of basic plans. If you're just looking at one key page on your website, um, whether that is, you know, the home page or again, product pages, et cetera, maybe starting there with some of those critical pages to just get an understanding of how users are navigating that page, where they're clicking, again, what content or um, call to actions are maybe getting overlooked, then how can you kind of bring those forward? Um, just giving you sort of an insight to what's actually happening when users get to your website um, and some UX visibility. Um, I've listed a couple here that are common tools for heat maps. So we've got Hotjar and Specklet and Lucky Orange are um, really popular ones. And then lastly, kind of at the middle of the funnel. So this is actually a little snapshot of something that we do um, with all of our clients, uh, all of our SEO clients when they uh, join top floor, if you will. So we start with a website quality audit. So that's basically taking kind of like full inventory, full stock of every single page on your website, what the search traffic looks like. Is it gaining or losing organic traffic? What keywords are, is it ranking for? And then of course we analyze, are those keywords relevant to that page? Is it, are we getting the right traffic? Um, it looks at like click-through rates, bounce-through rates, conversion rates, all of those things. So we just kind of start with, taking stock of what the website looks like and how every single page is performing so that we can start to identify some priorities. Um, this is a very, if you did this manually, it would take you a very long time, um, but you can do it. Um, I would just recommend starting with pages that are gonna be most important to you. So again, homepage, product pages, um, Maybe there's certain industry pages that you are really wanting to highlight or bring forward, starting with those ones that are going to be most important. And then again, I think Google Search Console is a great tool to use. Of course, Google Analytics, just measuring 
Are you gaining or losing traffic? And then if you can pinpoint why, is it because we're not showing up for a certain search term as much as we were last year? Um, all of those things that can kind of help address the, the why you're seeing that traffic drop or increase. Um, and then of course there's keyword research tools as well. Um, Moz, SEMrush, those can also kind of give you a good picture of what's going on. All right, and then taking it to the top of the funnel. So again, this is your kind of most expensive investment, I would say. So 40% of your marketing budget goes towards the top of the funnel or should typically go towards the top of the funnel. Um, and really, again, the more awareness that you can get, the more users will seek you out later down and or later on and kind of move down that pipeline. So a few ways to evaluate awareness and visibility. Um, one is what has your branded search volume looked like over time? Uh, I'll address kind of some tactics for understanding that in the next slide. Um, do you have any social media plans in place to increase followers? Um, are you doing any kind of cross promotion with other vendors, suppliers, OEMs that might help kind of highlight that relationship, um, that you know, social proof, if you will, um, and just overall kind of understanding how people are hearing you and whether you might need to diversify your channels. Um, so like I mentioned, we've got brand awareness and measuring that. So the best tip I would say here is if you have some sort of keyword research tool that actually tells you what your brand name's monthly search volume looks like, um, that can show you kind of how that search volume has fluctuated over time and whether you're trending upwards, aka generating more brand awareness or more brand recognition, or whether that's trending downwards. But there are some free tools out there too that can be helpful. Um, one is Google Trends. So you can plug your brand name in there and kind of see over time what, um, what sort of brand awareness or branded traffic you might be getting to your website. Um, you can also plug in competitors names in there too to see sort of what their brand awareness looks like so kind of benchmarking against them as well all right um and then i think this is the last one i had for bot or top of the funnel so looking at new content opportunities so again i'm looking for workarounds for keyword research tools for you guys so you don't have to necessarily invest in that but some kind of free ways you can identify some of this information. So what I really um, reference a lot is the people also ask report in Google. Um, so again, you could go back to um, some of the questions that have come up in your sales at the bottom of the funnel. Um, so take my WordPress versus Drupal example. I could plug that into Google and then see what do people also ask that's related to that topic that maybe I'm not taking advantage of that might be relevant to our specific customers. So take a topic or an industry, um, maybe a specific product, maybe you'll find that people are asking specific questions about specifications or you know, other things that you just you wouldn't maybe be aware of without just kind of mining through search results and seeing just seeing what shows up. Okay. That is the full funnel and how you can kind of identify, again, some low-hanging fruit and easy opportunities throughout. So just to kind of recap what we talked about, uh, first things first, make sure you set a goal and work backwards from that. So starting from the bottom of the funnel upwards to the top, um, set up interviews with your sales team. So addressing any content or pain points they're experiencing where marketing can come in and help you know, develop new content or case studies, et cetera. Um, export or look at your website data, um, specifically traffic and keywords and what can be learned from that or leveraged. Um, and then mine for new content opportunities. Again, that's the people also ask report or if you can do any sort of competitor research that would be really helpful there too. Um, and I do just want to offer as well, and you'll probably be getting some sort of marketing follow-up from us on this, but we will be doing complimentary digital marketing assessments. Um, so we'll start with a 30-minute kind of discovery call with you, sort of understand what your challenges are, um, and put together just what we call a campaign brief highlighting where your opportunities are. So that is all that I have. <laughs> um, I was really worried I would go over time, but I'm at 1130 on the dot. Yeah. <laughs>
Thanks, Anne. Yeah. Great job. So at this time, um, we didn't have any questions come in during the presentation, but if anybody has anything, hit up the chat box. Um, another thing too is there were some questions that were asked on the form, which I meant to address during, um, but I didn't have my notes on my screen, so I probably missed a few. So we could always run those. Yeah. I actually have those pulled up. So let's start. Um, do you have any tips on how to see who is visiting a website and how to contact them? Yes, I did see that one come through. I I don't know that there is a tool that will pinpoint a person down to their name, email, phone number. Um, I think there's some software out there that you could use to identify potentially companies that are maybe looking at you, but I don't, unless anyone else knows, I don't know of a way that you can identify a person, like a, an individual person um, who's been to your website. I think the best thing to do would be, again, um, making sure that you have places where they could potentially enter their contact information. Um, the other question I would ask too is like, if you did have that information, like what would you do with it? I guess like, Hey, I saw you were browsing my website. Like, I don't know. So just think about, you know, how you would even use that. But I think there's other, other things you can do as far as remarketing potentially to the people who come to your website to stay in front of them and hopefully get them into a position where they'll give you their contact information. That's a great idea. Yeah. If anybody has any magical tools that they know of, drop them in the chat box. That would be a great, a great asset. Um, let's see. Um, how about this one? If I had to choose between budget for inbound advertising and budget for site content, what would you recommend? Yes. I kind of see those as hand in hand a little bit. I kind of see, I, maybe there's some nuances to the question that I don't know, but I, I would say they go hand in hand. So if I'm thinking inbound, I'm thinking about what content would bring people to my website. So um, I think that if you're paying attention to quality content on your website and how it can address user pay, pain points, and looking at, you know, where keywords and SEO fits into all of that, I think naturally, hopefully, you'll you'll get some inbound visitors. So I would say you can kind of do, do both. I don't like the phrase kill two birds with one stone, but that's kind of what I'm getting at. <laughs> you just don't like to kill birds, do you? Yeah, no, no. not usually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I think the rest... probably covered basically everything, what you talked about. Um, yeah. I do I see have... oh, there was um, a question that I can see under like the Q&A. Oh. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. I just opened that up. Which digital channel, SEO, PPC, content, et cetera, would you suggest a, mar a company invest in if you added 20% to your marketing budget. So I'm assuming that means if you increased your marketing budget by 20%. Yeah. Uh, so this is always a tough question to answer. I, I always think, well, it kind of depends on you and where you're investing now. I think a holistic marketing plan is a really good idea right now. So if you're dedicating a lot of time to your website and SEO has been your main focus, maybe use that 20% to explore other channels like social media, I think LinkedIn is really important. Um, so it, one kind of depends on you and your situation. Um, but I will say that overall, I, I don't like to pick a favorite channel, but I think SEO is, is going to be the most evergreen and the most, um, the most long lasting. So if you're investing in marketing there, it's, I think, sure to be fruitful for the long term, whereas paid ads, um, things like that are kind of more of that, those short-term wins. Sounds good. Okay. I am not seeing any other questions come in. So that doesn't mean the conversation has to be over. If you do have questions that you think of, um, you know, please reach out. I will be sending, like I mentioned, a follow-up email probably later on this afternoon or tomorrow. 
with the full presentation and any resources that we talked about. Also direct link to that um, assessment that Ann mentioned. And so, you know, let's get in touch. And if you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, thank you, Ann. Yeah, Wonderful. you're welcome. And thank you to all who attended today. Have a great day. Bye.